Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit, and recently I had to undergo a major overhaul on my home server. So that prompted me for this new series that I'm going to be doing, which is home server stuff. Or I don't even know what to call it yet, but probably home server stuff. Anyway, uh, to start off, we're going to need to build a good foundation. And what we're going to be doing today is installing a home virtual environment server right here, right now. Alright guys, before we start off, I'm going to be talking about a couple of things. One, hardware requirements, and two, a little bit of a backstory why I went virtual environment versus a home dedicated server all in one. Now, for hardware requirements, it's not anything much. You could use anything from a laptop that supports 64-bit chip and virtualization technology to a desktop that supports the same thing. What I mean by virtualization technology, uh, it needs to be either Intel or AMD. For Intel, it's VT-X, and AMD is AMD-V. So if your chip is 64-bit and it supports those chipsets or supports those um, functions, you're good to go with this environment. Now, as far as the, a little bit of my backstory, I started running a file server on my desktop computer. And over time, I realized that it's deteriorating my hardware really quick because I have to leave the computer on all times. I have my GPU on there. It's running that. I have the hard drive in there that, and spinning that all the time. And I realized that I'm going to be eating through my hardware really quick. So I decided to move that environment or the file server itself to a laptop. I thought it was all smart and everything because once I move it to a laptop, I'm saving power and I could throw it in the closet and I'm not too afraid that it will overheat and I could just leave it somewhere. And it's got redundancy because if I lose power, the server still runs because it still has battery. Anyway, that quickly got old because keep in mind, a laptop is limited to its hardware. And once you start installing more software in there, you're going to eat through the RAM. And that's the limitation of these, hard, uh, of these laptops. The RAM is limited. So then I decided to get an uh, actual desktop PC, load hard drives in there, rip out the graphic card. I don't need anything. I just need a bare metal hard drive and a CPU. That ran great for a while. I actually ran that for a few years because I had my Linux operating system in there. Then I realized, hey, anytime I really needed to run a Windows server, like a game server or a game dedicated server, I needed to install VirtualBox in there, then run Windows, then run the software in there. Then I realized that uh, if I needed that, I needed to run another software. It, it was getting too hard to manage. And then on top of that, if I the more services I started to run on top of my uh, Linux box, the configuration started to get jumbled. I, I started to need this port, then I needed that port. Just running one operating system in itself, and then running all these services, then running virtual environment, it got really taxing on how to manage this server. So I started hunting down for virtual environment. This is where we are now. Um, then I started. I searched all around and I found this software called Proxmox. I've actually now been using that for a few years. Proxmox is a complete virtual environment cluster, you could say. And once you load that, you got the base and all it does is run virtual environments. And it's great because one, um, I just need one server to run multiple servers or multiple operating systems. And I could use it for test environments. So I've been using this for a few years and recently because I've been on such an old version and to upgrade from an old version to a new version, there was a lot of work. It was just much easier to wipe out the complete operating system. That leads us to here. Now going this virtual environment, the good thing is you could run multiple operating systems at one time. So I'm, if I'm running Linux and a Ubuntu or something and I'm running some services over there and I needed to run a second Ubuntu, I can. If I needed to run Windows 7, I can. If I needed to run Windows 2008, I can. And it all runs into one server. If I needed to run Mac, I can. I could run it into the server also. So the second thing that's great about it, it's a web console. So once you get this loaded, you log into a website and everything gets managed through the website. Long story short, I'm gonna show you guys how to install this virtual environment and then run our first operating system off there. Now that we're all caught up with my history and everything, let's get started on downloading the software that we need to get this uh, virtual environment going. Now I use Proxmox like I was explaining before. And I'm gonna leave a link in the descriptions below where you could get this uh, where you could get this software. Once we get to our website, we're gonna need to head over to downloads. 
and this is free and if you get the subscription you could upgrade as many times as you want I didn't get the subscription that's why it's free for us and that's why I'm having such a hard problem upgrading from version 3.3 all the way to 4.0 and that's been a long time 3.3 came out a while ago okay now you could either use the BitTorrent version just download the BitTorrent and then download via BitTorrent or you could download the ISO installer here I know it's a bit slower using the ISO downloader over here so I'd rather go for the BitTorrent but that's all up to you user preference after you download this uh, save it a spot that you're going to remember. Next thing you're going to need is Win32 Disk Imager. Next, we're going to slap in a USB. And you see I just plugged in one and it says Format Disk. I'm going to cancel that because I'm going to format it anyway with Win32 Disk Imager. Select the drive, which is M. Then you're going to open up your ISO image. For me, it's on my desktop, I believe. Star, Proxmox, ISO, Open. And you're going to want to hit right. I already did this and this process only takes a few minutes. It's not too long. The file is pretty small. And once you're done with that, now you made your bootable USB. And I'm going to show you how to install this on your server. All right. Once you pop in the USB, remember to make sure to get your computer to boot from USB. And there should be a shortcut like F11 or something like that. Now, after that, it's going to take some time to load and you're going to be presented with this screen. Accept the user license agreement. Make sure you're installing it to a correct hard drive. For me, it's my 500 gig. And hit next. Next is your region, settings, where you live, stuff like that, mumbo jumbo. Just make sure you put that stuff in and make sure you put the country because I forgot. And the next step you're going to be presented is to put in your password. That is going to be a root password, so don't forget it and an email address. Um, I don't know if it really does anything because I haven't had any notifications from email before, but it's making you put it in anyway. Now, the next step is to set up your home network IP address for the server. So, I usually do 192.168.1.199 and anything above that is server related. Next screen is to, once you hit next, it's basically just gonna run through the whole setup. It takes a while. I actually sped this up like 20 times. So um, just sit back and drink a coffee or something like that. All right, now that everything's all installed, you're gonna to navigate to the IP address that you gave the server earlier. And remember to put HTTPS in front of that. Don't worry about the certificate because it's on your local host network and the certificate's gonna be very weird. You can fix that up and it's a hard process to get that done. So I'd rather just leave it alone. Once you're in here, you're gonna use, your username is root. And the password is the password you gave earlier. Now, I already have a couple of instances served up. And you see I've been using it for the past eight days. I have not turned it off since I set it up eight days ago. And I loaded up a couple of servers in here. As you're going to see, I have a Ubuntu file server, which loads all my uh, file shares. My Windows 10, just, you know because I need it for a test environment. My Windows 7 RDP, this is interesting because I, always, I use remote desktop for a lot of places. So I made a Windows 7 image to remote desktop into anywhere instead of using my main desktop. Then I have another Ubuntu 14 server. Now I named it this way is because I know what distribution it is, what type of operating system and what I use it for. That's why I have FS, server, and then if I want to add more stuff, which I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, to create a new virtual environment, what we're gonna to need to do is actually upload an ISO. Now, I, I'm gonna to go to storage view. I'm gonna see that I have a few things in here. And my storage, local PVE, content, I have a couple of things in here. I'm gonna upload a template. What I'm gonna be uploading is something that I just downloaded, which is a firewall from Eden. E-D-E-N-N-D-N? -E -N -N -D -N? I don't know, call me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to upload this image. And this works for if you're going to install Ubuntu or if you're going to install uh, Kali Linux, Windows, or whatever it is. You could just load the image in here and then make an operating system. Now that everything's loaded, I'm going to go back to my server view. Create VM. It's going to be 104. My node is PVE. Now, you could actually put two Proxmox together and cluster them. So you have two Proxmox server and then you have each node and you can control all of them through one interface. 
Now, the, what I'm going to name on name this is Firewall 3.0. Actually, I'm just going to name this Firewall. And um, this will be a later project. I'm actually creating my own firewall, internet security, IDS, monitoring, and everything because I want to know what my internet's doing or tracking everything that's on my local network. And this is a software that I could do this with. Again, this will be on a later um, future video if you guys are interested. Well, if you guys are interested, I could make a video about a, this firewall. And no, skip that, okay. I know this is based off Linux, so I'm just gonna put Linux kernel. ISO image is where you selected the file that you just uploaded. You could actually use a physical CD drive if you have one. Next, I don't think I need much hard drive space with this. I'm just gonna turn this to 16. I changed this to raw, that's something that I like to use. Um, SATA, and I wanna store this on my local drive, which is the only drive I have right now. Next, CPU, I think for this firewall, I don't really need to worry about it, so I'm just gonna nix this one CPU, one core. 512 megs of RAM, I believe it's fine for this firewall also. And again, here you could adjust like 1024, whatever you want. Next, uh, network card. Now I have an Intel model. You could actually select a few models here, Realtek or VMware or Intel. And that's what I'm gonna be using on this one. Then next, I just have to confirm everything. And now it's gonna create a new image. From here, I just start, right click again, console. And now I have a visual representation of a monitor and it just booted from the CD-ROM. Once I hit enter, I just boot from the firewall. You see it's operating like an external monitor. That's how this works. And then I just go through the installation process. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys use another virtual environment similar to this, I wanna know in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, you can also put it in the comments below. So if you guys haven't subscribed already, please do so right now. It does help me a little bit and also gives you a notification of when my next episode's gonna come out. And because I've been on a weird schedule, I don't know exactly which day I've been pushing out episodes. And also share the video if you can and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. Thanks for the view and remember, hack till it hurts. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe, it helps me a lot. And if you want to watch more videos like this, I'll post a link right here.